Okay, wow, well, no, 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 okay. now you're bringing in a trouble. whole new conversation okay. into it. Okay. So it's our fault and we are, we have no choice in the matter of, oh, we have to protect ourselves because men can't control themselves. Oh, no, I never said that. Oh my I God, never said and women that. are sexualized. I never now. said that. Has your porn and sex addiction affected your studies, work, marriage and family relationship? Are you stuck with feelings of guilt, shame, remorse, and despair? Or has your addiction progressed from pornography to zina? Well, we're here to tell you you're not alone. My Teskia is the place where Muslim males and females struggling with pornography addictions can find recovery and freedom. That relationship with your Lord is fundamental for you to survive yeah, this world. Yeah, the faith, no, the faith, the faith, uh, faith gives you hope, not, not, not gives just, you not just faith. Um, purpose. Yes. It is, it is very but much. But not faith, I'm not saying to you any, because anyone can have that with any religion. They can say, oh, yeah, I, yeah, I, no, but I'm just saying just faith yeah. leads to hope, hope yeah. leads to purpose, purpose gives you life. And and, and, right? you, and you have so. you have some kind of certainty because the fact that you say I have these different religions and I follow what yeah. like I take a bit that I is yeah, but, yeah. that is your kind of certainty though if you think about it, you've got a bit of that and you're like I live by this rule yeah so you've given yourself a certainty but what we say is maybe it's not the true certainty yeah because what we're saying is there should be one way of life there's one truth you can't have two truths there's only one God there can't be two gods if there's two gods who created that God there has yeah. to be one way of life there has to be one truth because if we come and say Oh, I take a bit of this and a bit of that, etc. It's genuinely, it, at first okay. it doesn't make sense. So I know this is like a completely like far off, far fetched question, right? Yeah. For argument's sake, let's say the entire world is Muslim. Yes. Do you think that there would still be the problems that we have now? There will be problems, but yeah. not the problems that we have now. Okay. So, so there will still be of, problems. So like, what sort of issues would would be posed if everyone had the same religion and the same thoughts and the same way of thinking? We can't, because that's what Allah says in the Quran. We created you with, with, by like tribes and nations yeah. that you might get to know one another, not that you despise one another. Yeah. The point is this: Allah has created us with a aql to have decision, free will. Yeah. So we have that. That's the reason why we have a variety. Yeah, yeah, of course. But the thing is, there are also consequences of the decisions that we make. Mm -hmm. So we can't just say, okay, I'm just going to believe this. If what we believe is false, there's going to be consequences. Because God Almighty has created us yeah. and He wants the best for us. Yeah, He wants you to have the best of this life and the hereafter. He wants you to have, to have a relationship with Him and be grateful to Him. Yeah, he's not asking for much. I'll be honest yeah, with yeah, you. Yeah. So no, the point is this, I mean, and he's telling he's not you to, for much to live. Accept all the other things that he also no, asks. For, no, no, right? but, but he has a right to ask for them yeah. because the thing is, anything he asks for is not it's not bad for me. It's good for me. Like mention something that's bad, like you, in Islam, like you say, you know what? I don't know. I don't like this. Okay. Uh, okay. Why? Why? Why do I have to cover? Okay. Firstly, why? because number one. Firstly, because God said so. Why do I have no, no, to? Okay. No, but like, so why? Why is it yeah. that if I am not covered, for example, yeah. um, I, I, I truly believe also that in Islam, like if you are a true believer of Islam, yeah. Yeah. you also believe that, for example, let's say I am a practicing Muslim and I'm not with hajjah, yeah. that I can still go to heaven, 100%. If you don't wear what? A hijab. Yeah, no one said, yeah, yeah, no one, yeah, no one no, said you go to hell if you don't yeah, wear no, it, by no, the way. I know, I know. Yeah, I, yeah. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. That's why I, I say that wearing a hijab is a choice, right? No, it's not and, a choice. Let me tell you something. Okay. And you're gonna like so, this. So, so you're telling me it's not a choice. No. Nope. Don't do it. Then I and I am a practicing Muslim. I yeah. won't go to hell. But it's not a choice. You will go where? I will go to hell. No. You said that. So, but what, no, is no. There, is there any prescribed punishment for a woman that doesn't wear hijab? No. But then why is it why is it forced upon me if it's ah, not okay, something good, good, that will good. lead me? For example, so yeah. So why is it something that is not a choice? So you don't have a choice. You have to cover. But if you don't cover and you are a practicing good Muslim, mm. that does not mean you'll go to hell. But you have to cover. Why? Okay, good question. Have you read a book called Beauty Sick? No. Okay, I want you to, I want you to buy this book. Okay. If What's it's possible, it Beauty Sick. Beauty Sick? Yeah. It's by a non-Muslim. Okay. It's a very good book. Yeah. Now, this book is very interesting because we have this false notion yeah. that when a woman takes the, her hijab off, she chose to take it off. I believe this is the biggest false fallacy ever. Okay. You know why? why? Because I'm asking you a question. Did you choose to take your hijab off? I never had a hijab. Okay, you never wore it? Never. Okay. Are you telling me that as a woman, you choose not to wear the hijab? Yes. I, I say no. And, and I'll prove you. Let me tell you how. Are you telling me that the beauty industry, the females around you, the society that you live in have no effect on you and the way you are perceived 
and that has no element on you that you may feel because the book that I refer to called Beauty Sick tells you about women who are beauty sick. Their sickness is beauty, okay. which is what? When someone comes to me and says, I choose to wear the hijab, I'm like, please don't lie. You wear the hijab because Allah told you to. And now somebody comes and says, well, that's Islam is oppressive. And I say, well, no, hold on a second. Because the very women who wear mini skirts, who go get their, excuse me, their breasts done, yeah. their backside done, their hips done, their nose done. Can you imagine? They smash their nose. You know your nose, it gets smashed okay, and then yeah, reshaped. Yeah, yeah. This is very important. The point is this. They, are you telling me these people go and say, I choose to? No, you don't choose to. You do it because the beauty industry, the standards that the, uh, the society have put a bar on, you are trying to reach those at the cost that you can even lose your life. There was a Mexican Brazilian woman who died because she got implants on her backside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She I died. Saw that. So, but this so, is. So you're, but then, then your argument is actually null and void because the same way that a woman will choose or has no choice to wear hijab. Mm. Uh, but also does this these things yes. to herself and it's like oh that's not her choice yes then where where do you meet in the middle the where is the choice this is where you meet in the middle the point is this nobody has a choice listen carefully but then why do you have free will if you don't have a choice what's no, no, the fucking point in if, if god if, sorry excuse me sorry, for sorry, swearing sorry, sorry, sorry. so why is has god okay so your your argument here is telling me that god gives you free will and I, allows you to have free will but yes. you do not have a choice okay let me in explain. any matter no listen to me carefully you have free will you have a choice in what sense which one to follow so that the, so you're given free will just to choose god no 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 listen let me let me let me, let me explain let me explain it. No? let me explain it okay. for example both of them don't have no choice. The one who goes and gets a nose done and has makeup and can't leave the house without makeup, being in front of the window for two hours, etc. Okay, and the woman who wears the hijab, yeah. they are both told to do so. One is told to do so by, by the God, one who created her. Thank you. Now, now, one second. This is where it's crucial. Okay. Which one is deserving of being listened to? The one who created you or society? I mean, if you believe. Not believe. If arguments say, if, if God exists okay. and He's telling you, and by the way, we as men need to cover up as well. I mean, yeah, but that's oh, that's a theoretical question that you're asking me because how like. But I ask it theoretically. Pose, but so if, if I ask you theoretically. Yeah. So if, if if someone was. Who is more deserving of being ob obedient to? I mean, if if that is your argument, then yeah. of course it's your Creator that okay, has good. A, obedience okay, over good. society. So what have we learned here, sister, today? Both individuals have no choice. They are both told to do something. Okay. One is from the creator, yeah. one, one is from the creation. Okay. This is where I accepted Islam because I said, hold on a second. Okay. And I'll give you this personal story. I used to have a jumper like this. It was a black one. Okay. I thought I looked really handsome in it. <laughs> no, I, I genuinely thought I look, you know, I look very good in this jumper. I mean, I mean, I think I look very good. Maybe some people might differ. And I used to hate the jumper. Mm -hmm. It used to make me itch. When I used to be in the club, I used to itch, but I just hated it, but I was like, no, I look good, yeah? I said to myself, you know what? I'm the biggest slave. This is my master. This jumper is my master. It's like girls who walk into clubs with this much heels and they have to take you off in winter and it's freezing cold. Have you ever stood on pavement? Bruv, when I look at them, I feel the pain. <laughs> I feel the pain. And the thing is, I'm like, that is your slave. And just as me, when I was getting a jumper or driving a certain car or going to the gym, I'm not saying you can go so to the gym for help. So you're basically saying you'd rather be a slave to the to, one who to created me, than me than exactly. To the society that you know why? You know why, sister? Because the right. creation is never going to be happy with me. When I die, they're going to backbite me. They're going to talk bad of me. The creator is the one that's going to be be with me. He's the one who created me. He deserves my worship. Why would I go and try to please a group of people that are never going to be happy with me? And the one who created me deserves it. And guess what? Once I became a slave to him is when I found my true freedom. Once I became a slave to him... That's a very good uh, point, honestly. Sister, you, the point I'm trying to say here is this, yeah? Thank you. May Allah bless you. No, a, thank you. I appreciate it. And this is the key, sister. You know why? Because at yeah. this moment, that is when it clicked me and I said, wow. All this life, my masters were females. My masters was a, a jumper that I used to wear. My masters was money. I used to live a lifestyle and do extra hours so I can drive a certain car. I used to go to the gym. Yes, obviously for health reasons, but I wanted to have big biceps. So when I walk and wear that jumper, the girls can be like, wow, look at his biceps. I used to live, these were my, these were my masters. These were my gods. You know what I said? When I said, la ilaha illallah, I said, I am free from all of you because I want to worship the one who has created me. And this is where we say, sister, when we talked about choice the one that takes a hijab off look we have a lot of hijab influences who take the hijab off and they go 
Um, I chose to. No, you didn't. You're getting older and you look, you feel like you're getting wrinkly and ugly and you're showing the hair is beauty. And that is the reason why you chose. Don't say, I chose to. Say, but then, I was forced but then, to. But then there's like, so in terms of like the, the not having a choice yeah. there for something like that, yeah. um, like for example, it then comes down to equality again, which literally just circles us all the way back. Yeah. But, one yes, yeah. yes. No, no, camera, no. Okay. You know when you talk about... Can we have your voice? Oh. Yeah, yeah. Okay. You know when you're talking about choice? Yeah. You know, you don't have a choice whether to wear clothes or not, do you, in a society? Yeah, you, you don't. No, so there's a certain level of dressing decorum, regardless of however liberal you are, you cannot come naked. You have to wear a choice. This is imposed upon you, right? Yeah. Similarly, you should not equate someone putting on clothes to someone in the a society telling you to put on clothes to a society telling you to take it off. These are, this is a false yeah, no, no, equivalent. Was, um, but did you, did you get what I'm trying to say? No, 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 I understand. So, so, so you, know, you know why it relates to you perfectly? Because sometimes we go into this mentality where we think the life I'm living, I'm free. You're not. You're influenced one way or another. Because why as a woman, for example, the question is, and this is what's so beautiful about Islam. Let me tell you something. Before, I used to see women as a piece of meat. Wallahi, I had no respect for them. You know why? Because the society made me like this. And when I came to Islam, women, they became human in my eyes. Because Islam told me that you honor them, you respect them. It's not, what is she? You know, you're talking to her. You're not talking to somewhere else. And this is the issue, sister. There's, there's men here, like, there's men everywhere. The point is this, and I'm not saying women are perfect. There are, you know, a lot of, you know, women as well. Uh, let's be honest here. The point is this, that women are sexualized. Man, I'm walking down, I'm driving down the A406. Okay, okay, wow, no, 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 okay. now you're bringing in trouble. a whole new conversation okay. into it. Okay. So it's our fault and we are, we have no choice in the matter of, oh, we have to protect ourselves because men can't control themselves. No, I never said that. Oh I God, never said women that. Are sexualized. I never no. said that. I never said that. Did you I know, say that? No. You said women are sexualized. No. Why are we sexualized? Because the brain of men can't separate it from what it. Like what, does, what does Allah say in the Quran? You know what Allah I, says in the Quran? I don't know. You tell me. You're okay, an sister. Not I'm not the expert. I'm a normal nobody. You're, I think you, you no, know much. Right. No, no, no. Okay. We're both the expert. Tell me why. Sister, Allah says in the Quran, tell the believing men to lower their gaze. Yeah, they should. One second. Allah doesn't say women cover up because men can't control themselves. No, but why? But, but then, but then, why? So, if men shouldn't be gazing and sexualizing yes, and making yes, all of this, yes. then why do I? Yes. And and yes, you have yes. no choice yeah. but to also cover up no. to protect myself. No, 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 no. For what? Listen, listen to me. Allah says to me, tell the believing men to lower the gaze. Okay. That means if she's in a bikini, if she's in a niqab, yeah, yeah. if she's in a jilbab, yeah, yeah. irrelevant. I have to lower my gaze. I'm not going to say, oh, she's wearing a bikini. Man can look at her now. No, no, or, or, or she's wearing a cup. I have to lower my gaze, period. Okay. Now. But then why? I'm, no, no, no. You know what that means? That means this notion that men can't control themselves, that's why Allah tells you to cover up is not true. Because Allah tells who? The believing men first. Tell the believing men to lower the gaze. Okay, Tayyip. Now, Allah, right. Allah, does, Allah works on a micro level. You know what that means? You're yeah, training your young right. boys yeah, to yeah. respect women by lowering the gaze. Yes. Now, how does Allah deal with it in a macro level? By saying, do not sexually objectify women. Now, if I am looking all around me and I see bikini women in there that's talking about chocolate, and I'm thinking, what's chocolate got to do with a bikini? Yeah. And then I'm seeing a woman over there, argument saying, dressed up in this way and that way. The society is sexually objectifying women. Look, I was watching a documentary yesterday. Yeah? yeah. It was talking about in the 1970s, Times Square in New York was a, oh, it's, it's disgusting. Yeah. There was a man who killed 80 prostitutes. And these women were de they were not human. Yeah, there was a study not. that was done that yeah. looked into a man's brain. They showed him women in bikini. The part of the brain that lights up for tool use, you know, tool use, yeah, screwdriver, yeah, yeah. lit up. You know what that means? He didn't even see him as human. The part of the brain was like, this is, this is an object. How does a human being, and a lot of serial killers, you know how they had something in common? They all used to watch pornography. The point is this, men are created visually. If you sexually objectify women to such a level, men lose respect. This doesn't mean that a person has a right to go and abuse or rape or whatever just because a woman is dressed up in a certain way. There are women who are dressed up in hijab and niqab that get raped. 
The yeah. point is this, sister. Everyone has a role to play. My role is I lower my gaze. But I would not also like you to, this woman to be in my face or dressed up in a certain way where I'm like, well, I, I, would, I would not like to see that. The point is this. Islam deals with giving the responsibility to both. It doesn't say, hey, you, women, men are animals. You are to blame. It's your fault. You cover up. Islam doesn't say that. But the Islam, same way that women are sexualized, men can be sexualized as well. No, so then why are men... When, oh, you sister, can sexualize. I'm sister, sorry. Let me tell you something. Yeah? Can be sexualized let me tell you, let me try, tell you why, sister. Yeah? Do, has, I've never seen a woman ever go and say, you know what, let me go and... There's a picture of a man's calves. And let me go and stare at it. That's not her nature. In her nature, not Can men go and stare at women's calves? Bruh. Okay, I don't sister. know what. Sister. Calves. Sister. Just, just calves. Sister. 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 Calves. I know man's, man them. <laughs> that lose their mind. Go they lose their mind when they, when, when they see a toe. <laughs> okay, when they see an ankle, he start, his temperature starts rising, his blood pressure goes somewhere else. The way we're created, sister, we are visual. So what I'm trying to say, sister, is that Allah is telling you this is the best way to live your life. And I'm telling you, sister, look here, there's a lot of things I had to give up when I came to Islam. A lot of things I did not want to let go of. But let me tell you something. Letting go of them, it made me who I am today. Islam is the solution. There is no other religion, I'm telling you. It might sound, yeah, okay, here we go. My religion is different. I'm telling you, we can prove it. I'm not here to talk. I can prove it. Islam gives me purpose. I know my purpose. I know why I'm here. I know where I'm going. I know what to live by. But the point is this. Islam is the best solution. And guess what? You are going to live by a way of life anyways. And you already are. Live by the one that God sent you because that's the best. You make very good points. You make very good points. Very, very nice conversation. Me too, with you. sister How Alia. Long have you been trying? Like, oh my gosh, I think it's been an hour probably. <laughs> I think so too. Thank you, uh, sister Alia. Look, thank you. We don't shake hands. We don't. Yes, uh, but you know why? Uh, but you know why? Because, because out of respect. Uh huh. But the thing is, you see the. the oh, I see that's a little bit disrespectful. Ah, today. good. But we need to end it with this. Uh -huh. You know why? Because there was, I think you know the Me Too movement. Remember the Me Too movement? Of course, I know the Me Too. Movement. You know now in workplaces, you know back in the day, not back in the day, like a couple of years ago, in the workplace they could touch a woman yeah, like yeah, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. they can't do that anymore. Yeah. You know in the workplace they have to leave the door open now. Yeah. You see, Islam has come and told you, look, prevention is better than cure. Islam has one solution. It doesn't say, drink alcohol, then we'll take you to rehab. Islam says, don't drink alcohol. The point is this, sister. Me and you, like, for example, a handshake is nothing. Like we can say, okay, yeah, what's the big deal? Yeah. But it's interesting that you see it as a sign of respect. Yeah. But to me, I'm, I feel like I'm honoring you so much that I don't even want to shake your hand. Not because there's anything wrong with you. Because you know why? Because that's the level of respect I have for you. But society's made it seem as if, you know what? Look how disrespectful he is. No, I don't think you're disrespectful. It's your, it's your you prerogative know, to not want to shake my no, hand. No, no, I do it because I honor and respect you. Well, thank you. That's why I do it. May Allah bless you. You are a lovely person. You too. And it was, it was lovely talking to you, sister. If you have any questions, my table is there. And we can carry on, inshallah. Sure. And may Allah bless you, inshallah. And give us the best in life hereafter. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye.